on a million works of art were scored and of those 50 students were selected. 50 out of about 57,000 students in the world who had submitted about 1 million pieces of art were selected. Artwork is titled Him Within the Golden Hour. It is an intimate piece made with acrylics, dip inks, India ink, and 23K gold leaf all on stretch canvas. Hello, beautiful people and fellow art enthusiasts. Um, I can't believe I'm finally doing this video. <laughs> finally. <laughs> so, um, a couple of close friends requested that I do um, a review of my past AP art portfolio. Luckily, it got a top score of a five in the AP College Board ratings. Along with getting a perfect score, I was also thankfully featured, as you now saw, in the um, 2021 AP College Board Digital Exhibition, ranking within the best submissions of the portfolios from that year. So um, with that in mind, I wanted to make this video finally. <laughs> um, uh, it's just like a helpful asset to anyone creating their portfolios currently or just anyone in need of advice. Um, so basically I will just quickly read my sustained investigation statement. So my theme was basically surrounding the subconscious mind, which is very um, vague. You know, I did it correctly. I, I had to do something correctly. They gave me that score. I, I, I mean, I hope. Or maybe they were just feeling generous and they had like an extra plate of chicken that day. I don't know. My sustained investigation revolves around the beauty and the perspective of the subconscious mind. Exploring individual emotions created by our own ideas and thoughts. In addition, I decided to introduce a subtle touch of an LED medium. As the work progressed, she visually sparked to life the human state of mind. So my sustained investigation basically revolved around the subconscious mind, um, individuals' ideas and thoughts, and kind of just how that relates to mentality and emotional response and just visually interpreting that through a investigation. So let's dive into it and I will put in the select selected work section right at the end so stay tuned. Alrighty, so the first one is called Hanahaki Disease. Um, I actually have her right here, my lovely gorgeous girl. <laughs> it's not quite big as you could tell in the image but there's a lot of um, detail work within it. I'll obviously put um, some better process shots than just holding it up here, but just as a physical note. <laughs> so just a side note, some of the artworks in my portfolio I currently do have in my possession, luckily, just like this lovely girl right here, but um, sadly some of the other ones in my portfolio have already taken their toll and I have um, sold a couple and so I don't currently have them in my possession with me but I'll try to explain the pieces in my portfolio to the best of my ability if I don't have them physically <laughs> with me but I do have a couple of process shots if that helps out too so let's get started with this one the subject in this piece is my friend Emma I painted her inspired by the concept of a fictional Japanese disease where the victim coughs up flower petals due to unrequited love. The flowering plants will grow within the victim's lungs until eventually rendering breathing impossible and proving to be fatal. I wanted to relate this concept to Emma herself, specifically the impact that her difficult relationship with her mother left on her. A love supposedly mutual, genuine, is instead parasitic, one-sided, and malicious to the subject. Instead, the worn tones of her hair and the flowers are contrasted by almost the pale skin tone to convey the oxygenization and lifelessness. Further experimentation was also made with their dramatic use of the chiaroscuro technique within portraiture, utilizing ink and color pencil for detail refining. 
This painting was based on a close friend diagnosed with bipolar and major depressive disorder. Moreover, the times that we spent together were bittersweet, when she began to question where her existence lies in this world. Whenever this topic came up in our conversations, I would try to control the situation by comparing her to the ever-changing universe. We're all but atoms compared to the sun, floating amongst the borderline of a man-made universe. Therefore, one day, our worries will seem insignificant. As a result, she shouldn't let herself, nor any other person, try to reach and claim hold of her own universe's stars. Thus, I wanted to implicate this idea visually, reflecting the ideology of her own mental cosmic beauty in relation to her as a person. This painting is an observational self-portrait model to portray the weight of desperation within an individual and their surrounding environment. I have attached and took the reference photo during sunset as the sun's warm illumination came through the room, yet the individual, which was myself, still lurks in the shadows of her mental despair. The overwhelming feeling of gloom taking over the colors of the supposedly warm environment. The subject's gaze turns downwards, hopeless and confused. I purposely wrapped myself around furry lights while taking this reference photo to showcase the individual's direct attempt to illuminate herself and her mental state of mind. So, lovely number four, I do actually have in my possession and it's titled Multiples. Um, it's about the same size as the first piece. It's an 11 by 14, it's just framed. Um, but I do still currently have it in my possession, and let's get into the details of the painting now. Multiples is a self-portrait and visual depiction of the different parts of one's subconscious mind embodied into alter egos. I always had a fascination with the idea of other personalities living inside of us, embodied in everything we do or say and only coming out in certain situations. It's almost like we all have a second identity, or a self that will always be hidden from significant people around us, but will always take part in our mindsets and actions and decisions. In multiples, you can see the fogged clarity within the main character in the center. She is being influenced by her counterparts of the subconscious mind. In addition, the saturated values and contrasting gradients shown truly allowed me to explore how I could display an individual's different personalities at play while achieving this surrealist subconscious look. So, um, the following piece actually I do have in my possession as well, and you probably recognize it from the intro. It's Him Within the Golden Hour. Um, this piece is probably one of my most, like, significantly significant significantly gosh i can't english right now um significantly um recognized pieces um just by the technique the gold leaf the gradients um and yeah so let's get into the details with this one in this piece i wanted to depict my subject in a state of awe and mental wonderment with his surroundings. I purposely altered my palette to a saturation of warmer valley tones, experimenting with strong mark making and gold leaf. In addition, I wanted to spark a deep connection with the subject and the viewer through my work, making them feel the same sense of admiration and wonder when they look at this piece, so that they can ask themselves, and can wonder what kind of landscape is the subject looking at. This small painting is called Tender. It's a six by six inches on all sides, so it's a very small piece. Basically, I used it as like a filler for my sustained investigation. What I wrote for the small description of it in my process slot is that it represents eyes acting as the window to the emotions of the mind. This painting is called Blue Boy. 
It's made with acrylics, acrylic medium, color pencils, a bit of fine tip ink pens, and some EL wire on stretch canvas. It is a 16 by 20 and basically it visually taps into the mental struggles of one's thoughts and self-esteem. It depicts the theme of mental health and imbalance within an individual, to be seemingly helpless and unrecognizable to others as you are to yourself. This piece is also a 16 by 20. It is made with acrylics, fluorescent UV, black light paint, UV pigment, India ink, and color pencils all on primed canvas. Suggested by the title itself, Dazzle Me is a self-portrait that represents the concept of greed and the blindness of power. The UV pigment is utilized on the materialistic objects that are highlighted over the individual. When initially photographing the reference photos for this piece, I purposely plastered my background with wallpaper reading, Greed is Lethal, to communicate the artwork's message directly with the viewer. Additionally, I increased the impact of the work's message by departing from my previous usage of materials and experimenting with ultraviolet sensitive pigment within my paint palette. And now we're on to piece number 9. It's a 9 by 12 inch painting made with acrylics, colored pencil, 23k gold leaf, dip ink pens, and written parchment paper. It's partially a collage and is titled Milk and Honey. In this piece, the rush consumption of milk conceptually represents the subject's need for internal purity, as milk in most cultures is one of the purest forms of nutrition. I utilized a heat gun to age the parchment paper, then later layered it on canvas and progressively applied our acrylics and gold leaf. Alrighty, so lucky number 12 here actually, luckily do still have two. Um, it's called Inner Light. What I did with this one was quite um, the interesting technique. I'll talk um, in detail more about it in a second. But I just wanted to note that in the two reference images I'm going to display right now, there is a before and after. So what I incorporated in this one, as I talked about in the beginning, I did incorporate a lot of LED um, medias into my artwork. And so in this one, I incorporated mo a motion sensing light. Right now it's not really activated because I need light to film this video. <laughs> but um, I incorporated a uh, motion sensing light in within the canvas. It, luckily it's a thick canvas. And um, just kind of like cut out the canvas in a sense. So it could detect motion um, within the galleries. Um, but yeah, so let's get into that. So this painting is an 11 by 14 as previously shown. It's made with acrylics, 23k gold leaf, and silver leaf, including inner motion sensing LEDs. So the meaning behind this painting is basically depicting an intimate and restful moment through the impression of the subconscious mind. My subject is displayed with mocking birds shown flying in and out through the peat poles of his soul. I specifically chose to introduce mockingbirds within this concept because they symbolize innocence, revival, and reincarnation. Thus, the individual, in a sense, is experiencing his last moments with life until rebirth, where he encounters the mockingbirds that eventually lead his soul, and as they stand in front of it, the bright internal light incorporated within the canvas can greet the viewers. Furthermore, blue tones are introduced to the warm tonalities of this piece to bring focus to the subject itself. Okay, so we're on to number 11, and this painting is called Head in the Clouds. It's made with acrylics, watercolor, color pencils, dip inks, gold leaf, and UV pigment. That was a mouthful. But basically, the meaning behind this painting is that it visually showcases the feeling of eternal ecstasy within the mind, utilizing the power of the unconscious to form a sentiment of utter euphoria, thus uniting the conscious and unconscious realms of experience within the subject's surrounding scenery, which in this case is obviously a rooftop view.
I talk a lot. <laughs> So, um, we're on to our very last piece and I'm very excited about that. Also, apologies for the terrible shitty lighting that just came out. The sun just wants to say hello right now, so I apologies for that. Um, but yes, number 15. She is called Drift. She's covering my frame, but she's a gorgeous one, so I'll let it be. Um, it's actually one of the biggest pieces I've made to date. It's a <laughs> it's a 15 by 30. It's mixed media, um, but I'll get more into detail on what various medias I use to create this lovely or layered work of art. Oh my god, yay! We're on to our final piece. So number 12 is called Drift. As previously mentioned, it's a 30 by 15 with mediums including watercolor, watercolor pencil, and Prismacolors with 23 kate gold leaf on Strathmore mixed media paper. So the meaning behind this really is that I started by carefully studying light reflection against the water and its interaction with my subject. I observed how the light source complemented my subject when initially photographing the reference photos for this concept. The individual has at last reached enlightenment within the subconscious mind. She is displayed to be at peace with her own emotions and flow within their currents. In addition, I ultimately departed from my previous usage of materials and pushed myself towards watercolor in its entirety. I challenged myself with this unforgiving and unpredictable material and brought out the beauty of its soft, dreamlike appearance to create my own reflection of light. So yes, that's about it for my sustained investigation within the AP portfolio. And I hope that that just kind of helped anyone in need of ideas or in need of just inspiration for um, portfolio class this year. I am going to quickly do a run through of the selected work, just if it helps anyone and what I specifically wrote for each artwork that I chose for the five selected works at the end of my portfolio section. So I chose five of my strongest pieces from my portfolio in the selected work section, starting from multiples and ending all the way to drift. Since the AP readers at College Board don't really have a chance to look at both your selected works and sustained investigation, they are both judged separately. Having this in mind, I wanted to write all I could and capture all I could in the idea section of each slot to help them see how each piece correlates in both theme and technicality. At first we be began with multiples because it's a self-portrait and it's a good piece to showcase the meaning behind the subconscious mind which was the overall theme of my entire portfolio and obviously since there's multiple types of portraits um, displaying surrealist techniques. I then followed it with Hanahaki, Him Within the Golden Hour, Milk and Honey, and last but not least, Drift, since they are all four the strongest in medium exploration and techniques. All right, and that's about a wrap for my portfolio. And I just really hope that this helps anyone in need of inspiration for this year or just with their own type of artwork. If anyone is really watching this video, do um, comment on the comments down below or DM me on Instagram if you ever want any more advice on how to start off a portfolio, write descriptions, or even just college submissions. If some of the colleges I luckily got into were um, Harvard, Sanford, RISD, Pratt Institute, Parsons, the New School, Otis College of Art and Design, Massachusetts College of Art and Design, the University of Arts in London, um, Paris College of Art, along with some many others. <laughs> so if you want to hear a little bit about that, just and how I managed to get into those schools or how they luckily wanted me, <laughs> do just tell me or comment down below. Thank you so very much for watching and hopefully I'll keep doing this and see you next time. Ciao!